Hey everyone, this is Chappie over here at Intense, and for today's video, we're gonna be going over the unboxing and assembly of our Intense 951 XC. Here we have our toolbox, and then below that, in our wheel spacer, we'll notice we have our accessory bag. So the accessory bag is gonna contain two of the tools that we will use for assembly, and then also all the documentation on our XC here. So let's go ahead and open our toolbox up. So inside of our toolbox, we'll have our torque wrench, our shock pump, and then also our tubeless tire sealant. We have our Intense branded torque wrench. Then we have a variety of bits and also extensions and pretty much every one of these bits um, will give you more than what you need to service and maintain your bike. All right, moving on to our accessory bag. So you'll see that there's tons of documentation on all the product that is spec'd on your bike, but also you will find we'll have our included three-way, which we'll use primarily for the assembly of the bike, and then also a T25 or Torx 25L wrench. This is a very useful tool, um, and this will this will help us with initial assembly. And then at the very end, we'll follow through and using this tool, our torque wrench, which we've already gone over to torque each of the bolts and components that we have installed through this process. At this point, we'll pull our bike straight up out of the box and we will rest the nose of the fork over, taking care to manage the placement of our handlebars and slide it down. This gives us a good stable platform to carry on with mounting the bars up to our stem and then being able to remove the bike out of the box. So from this point, let's remove the packaging. We'll go ahead and we'll leave the plastic packaging and the cardboard over our grips. This will protect it when we go to flip the bike upside down to mount our wheels. So we'll just leave those like that. Before we go through assembly, we're gonna turn that stem around facing forward. This is the proper orientation. It will also be the same direction as the arch of the fork, which we'll display here soon. So with that exposed, we're gonna take our included three-way with the four millimeter Allen, and we're gonna remove the stems, this piece right here, faceplate bolts. So as we move to the bars, there is a specific way that the bars need to be facing in order for it to be oriented properly on the bike. So you see the Intense logo is over here on our rider's right hand side. And from there, we'll take our stem faceplate with the Intense logo across the top. We will hold into position. We'll start those little screws by hand. Always good to start those by hand if you can. And we'll begin to thread those into position. And then next, we're gonna come back with our seam bolt on the bottom, get those into position. Again, start those by hand, just to make sure everything threads in smooth. We wanna make sure our bar is centered in the stem, and you can use the hash marks on either side or the Intense logo down the center to help line everything up. Once you're happy with the lateral position of the bars, we can go ahead and snug this down just to hold it in place. So the last factor we wanna make sure that we are 100% dialed in here is we wanna make sure the gap at the top of our stem, as you see here between the stem faceplate and the stem itself is zero. We don't want any gap here. Now coming down to the bottom of the stem, you'll see down here, there will be a gap and that is important. So that gap, is what we will use to close in as we tighten this bolt, and that is what will lock our bar into position. The next step here is we're going to elevate our dropper post. We're gonna do that by pulling off Ryder's left hand grip cover temporarily, so we'll pull this guy off, and then down here, you'll notice our dropper lever. This will be on the Ryder's left hand side, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna depress this lever, and then we will see that our seat will come up. Seat so comes up, once it's all the way up and it has stopped moving, we'll release that lever and it'll lock it into position. So as you can see how the dropper post functions by depressing this lever and letting that seat elevate, it also works in the reverse function as well. So you would press that dropper lever just like we did previously, then you would sit on the seat and just your weight 
would drop that seat post. And just like how we released the lever to lock it in position before, you would release the lever again and that will hold the dropper post down. So this is a very useful tool when you're riding more technical terrain or you just wanna get the seat out of the way or something as simple as just coming to a stop. Go ahead and throw our grip protector back into place just to give ourselves one more level of protection. And then now we'll pull the bike out of the box and set it on the ground. With the bike in this position, we can go ahead and remove the last bit of packaging. Let's go ahead and start installing our component. We're gonna have our derailleur main pivot bolt, which is this guy right here. We are going to have our B plate, which is this guy right here. And then we're gonna have our B screw. So first step here is we're gonna to wanna to make sure our B plate is firmly pressed up against our B screw. Then from there, we're going to make sure our B plate, this surface right here, is resting behind this surface right here. So we will line our bolt up and we'll begin to thread the derailleur into position. So take great care in making sure that everything's aligned properly. If you feel any sort of resistance, do not force it, just back it off and then attempt to realign again. So we're gonna go till we get to snug and then we're gonna go a quarter turn off. Then what we're gonna do to ensure everything is positioned properly is we're gonna let go of our rear derailleur and apply forward pressure. And as you can see, with everything pushed forward, we know those parts are interfacing properly and we can go ahead and snug this into position while still applying that forward pressure. And we know everything's good there. We have this little lock button, so you can see here, this is gonna act as an aid to give us more room for wheel installation. So how this works is we're going to take our fingers and behind the lower cage of our rear derailleur, we're gonna push this forward. And once we are about at a 45 degree angle towards the front of the bike, we are going to push this little padlock button and hold it in position. And then we're going to release the pressure off of the lower cage of the derailleur all the way until it stops. Once it stops, we can release the pressure off that button and this locks our lower cage of our derailleur forward. We're going to remove our rear axle and remove our pad spacers. Grab the ends of the ears here of our axle. We'll slide this straight out until it clicks. Once it clicks, we know it's far enough out in order to rotate the lever either to either side. And then we can begin spinning that in a counterclockwise position, a rotation to remove the rear axle. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is our protectors. We have a rotor protector and then also our axle protector here. So when we remove these, we wanna take care to make sure that nothing is attached to our protectors. And then also as we pull our rotor protector off, making sure that we do not touch the rotor in any way, the grease from our fingers or from the hub or anything like that can cross contaminate our rotors and greatly reduce our braking performance. So kind of a handy tip here is we're gonna place the tire on our thigh and that will give us a stable platform in order to place our rear wheel into position. So we'll hover our wheel directly over where the axle will lie. We'll pull our rear derailleur back. We'll slowly drop the wheel into position taking care to not only line up our hub ends, as we see here to the dropouts for our axle, but also the rotor into the brake pads of our brake caliper. So just in reverse operation, as we did when we removed it, we're going to align it into the rear dropout here. We're gonna slide it all the way through. Then we're going to use the lever and supply a small amount of inward pressure as we turn this axle and then taking care to make sure everything's aligned properly. If you feel any binding or anything that's causing a lot of resistance, definitely back the axle back out and then retry. But right now, everything is going in nice and smooth. We'll notice that we'll get some load on there. Once that is in kind of into a snug position, we'll go ahead and straighten our lever back out, slide this back into the axle, give a little tap, make sure that's in position. Then that snugs our axle into place. 
All right, so now we're gonna unlock our rear derailleur. So we're gonna take care to make sure the chain isn't on the paint or anything like that um, as we go to unlock. So line that, and then what we're going to do, the only thing we need to do for this is push the lower part of our derailleur cage forward and you'll notice that the lock will become unlocked. Once that becomes unlocked, gently release the lower cage of our derailleur let that fall back until it builds tension on the chain. As you can see there, now have tension on the chain. Let's move to the front of the bike. So we'll go ahead and get the fork prepped for wheel installation. We'll go ahead and grab the wheel and prep that as well. So coming over to the front of the bike, just like we did in the rear, we're going to remove our red pad spacer. We'll flip our axle lever up and begin to loosen our axle. Slide this out. And now our fork is ready to receive the front wheel. Just like the rear, we're going to align our hubs over our dropouts. And then slowly bring the wheel down as we align our front brake rotor to our caliper. Once everything's lined up, we'll drop that into place. And once we know everything's into position, we'll take our front axle, insert into the fork and front hub slide this into place and then again we're going to apply some inward pressure as we use this lever to turn the axle in so this particular axle is a quick release axle so as you can see here it has a lever and a lever only so the most important thing to know here is that this lever is oriented properly we want to flip our lever in this case, down. So we want to go in line with our fork here. So we'll just press with our palm and press that into position. All right, so looking at our pedals, there is a left specific pedal and a right specific pedal. And these will be labeled by CR with an L signifying left or CR R signifying right. Another telltale sign is the left pedal will always have a groove machined in, and the right pedal will not. So right pedal will turn as a normal bolt would, so it's a right hand thread. Left hand pedal uses a left hand thread, so it's gonna turn opposite. So that old saying where lefty loosey, righty tighty, that is correct for our right pedal, but it's actually gonna be opposite for our left pedal. We're gonna go ahead and start with our right pedal. Um, one thing we recommend as a tip is go ahead and put a small spot of grease onto the threads. This will just help if you ever go to remove your pedals later on, it just might make things a little bit easier for you. We'll take the six millimeter Allen tip on our included three way. We will line our pedal into position. We will use our fingers to begin threading that pedal into place. Once we feel that the pedal has started to thread onto our crank arm here, we can now use that six millimeter Allen from the back side of our pedal and thread that into position. At this point, we'll just go ahead and give it a firm snug. And we'll move over to our left pedal. We're gonna apply a small amount of grease. Before we flip the bike over onto its wheels for the first time, let's go ahead and take this opportunity to make sure our gears are shifting properly. So at this point, we can go ahead and remove our rider's right-hand side grip cover. This will expose our rear shifter, start spinning our drivetrain, and then from there, we can begin clicking through a few of the gears. To make sure everything's shifting smoothly, Let's go ahead and flip our bike over onto our wheels. So the next step here is we're going to address our stem and headset preload. And this cap with this silver bolt that uses a five millimeter Allen is what's used to adjust our headset preload. So as we are here, it's very, very loose. So we wanna go ahead and tighten things up. So we'll snug this down the suggested torque value or what we've found to be the best range to achieving this is two to four Newton meters. We'll spin the bars. What we're looking for is a slight amount of resistance, but not too much to where the bars are just flopping around. This feels really good where it's at. Um, so the next step here is we're going to make sure our 
bars are lined up with our front wheel and our fork. So the easiest way to do this is we're gonna use the front plane of our handlebars here and eye them against the front plane of our fork uppers. Once we're happy with those results, we're gonna go ahead and tighten the pinch bolts of our stem here. And let's take a look at our saddle height. So a little tip is we'll place our hand, kind of like karate chop style, we'll place that right on the top of our hip bone. That is a really good rough gauge on where our saddle height can be. On our 951XC, there is a seat post clamp here and this uses a four millimeter Allen. It's going to slightly loosen, you know, maybe a turn and a half to two turns. That's more than enough for this. And then from there, we're gonna bring our seat down. We're just gonna gently push our post down with our seat up. We're gonna go to about right there and then we'll use that same method to check our saddle height. So again, karate chop hand at the top of your hip bone. And that is actually pretty much right on the money. We will snug this into position. Let's go through our final check process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna torque the, the bolts for each of the components and items that we've installed. We're gonna go ahead and torque our rear derailleur bolt to the prescribed eight to 10 Newton meters. So we're gonna go with nine Newton meters in this case. We're gonna use our five millimeter hex bit. I'm gonna line this into our rear derailleur and we're gonna go ahead and torque this into position. All right, next, since we're here, we're gonna go ahead and torque our rear axle. So the torque value of our rear axle is 10 to 12 Newton meters. So we're gonna adjust our torque wrench. We're gonna go in a opposing direction because we're coming from the backside. We're gonna go counterclockwise and torque our rear axle. All right, so moving to the front of the bike, let's go ahead and set the torque of each of the bolts for our stem faceplate first, and then we'll move to the back of the stem. So knowing as we went through assembly, we wanna make sure the gap is zero at the top. So with that in mind, we're gonna take our torque wrench set to five Newton meters, which is our prescribed torque value for the stem faceplate bolts. And we're going to do the top bolts first. So as you can see here even, we have our torque values listed right on our stem itself. So we already know our torque wrench is set to five Newton meters. Using that four millimeter bit, we're gonna reset our torque value here. If you purchased your bike with pedals and a water bottle cage, let's go through how we can install our water bottle cage now. Loosen these bolts. We'll go ahead and align our bolts into our water bottle cage, which will be the bottom hole. And then on our bike, we'll use this top hole, that. So with that in place, we'll go ahead and roll our water bottle cage back, hold those bolts into position, and then we will roll everything into place. So once we have that in place, we will go ahead and take our torque wrench and use the three millimeter hex tool to get those threads started on both bolts. And from there, I'll just go ahead and torque to two Newton meters. The last step here is more of final setup. So there's a couple things we can do here. You can go ahead and adjust the controls to make sure that they feel comfortable for you. Um, and then also something that's important is also tire pressure. So a really good place to start for most people in most conditions is 26 PSI for our front tire and 29 PSI for our rear tire. And then going from there, um, we will go to set up the sag of our bike. So sag is referring to the amount of suspension that's compressed when you sit on the bike. So that's a very important adjustment and it's very specific. Um, and we have an entire video walking through this process um, in detail on how to go about doing this. So if you have any questions on this process or you need any assistance throughout the build, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're more than happy to help you go through that process. And um, we look forward to seeing you out on the trails. Thanks for choosing Intense.